Hey everyone, welcome to the cabin. My name is Alec Brits, and today we're going to be checking out the Rupert Neve Designs MBC. I'm going to show you everything you get when you purchase this master bus converter, but most importantly, how it sounds. Thanks as always to Studio Care for supplying the review units. If you enjoy what you see, please consider subscribing. But for now, let's jump right in. On the front of the MBC, we have beautiful metering over here. It shows all the way from minus 60 all the way up until zero. Then we have our gain reduction LEDs over here. Starting on the limiter, we have our sidechain high pass filter. This allows you to go from 20 hertz all the way up to 250 hertz. Next up, we have our gain control. Then we have our threshold control. And then we have our release control. There is, of course, a limiter in button over here to bypass and bring in the limiter. And there is a link function. The link function leads off of the left, but they do advise you to be able to match both sides to have really true and accurate stereo imaging. The limiter in this device is really interesting because it's not too dissimilar from the master bus processor except now you have fine control over threshold, attack, release, and of course makeup gain with the high pass filter. We then have our sample rate section. You can go from 44.1 all the way up to 192. I'm currently using this as the work clock for my Apollo X16s. To change the sample rate, you simply have to press the sample rate button at the top. We then have our ADC calibration settings over here. The reference is plus 4 dBU. And then over here we have from minus 20 all the way to minus 14 dBFS. For me to have unity between my Apollos and this device, I found minus 20 dBFS to work quite well, especially coming off of the console. We then have our transformer section over here. Red silk allows you to be able to saturate some of the upper mid-range frequencies all the way up into the top end, while blue silk allows you to be able to saturate your low mids all the way into your sub-region. The transformers that are inside this box are completely bespoke. If you have something that's operating in a mic pre or a compressor, your voltages are inherently a lot higher than what you're dealing with within conversion. So they had to redesign the entire way that they make these little transformers to react the perfectly the same way and give you full control of not only the red and the blue silk, but you can also just switch in the transformer in and out of the circuit itself. On the rear of the device, it starts with a power switch. I do wish this was in the front, but that's just the way it goes. It can go from 100 to 240 volts. You have your serial number, word clock in and out. We then have our digital audio outputs. We have AS3 optical spitoff on a coax. So you can connect this to pretty much any interface you've got. We then have our meter peak hold dip switches over here. Then we have our line inputs over here. These are combi jacks, so you have TRS and XLR input. The first test we're gonna do is just compare the Apollo X16s to the MBC. So the next thing we're going to test out is the silk functions. The next thing we're going to do is take a listen to the limiter. So what I've done here is not added gain with the limiter, but simply just catching those stray peaks from kicks and snares or any kind of fast transients.
next thing I want to talk about is clocking. Every interface has a different kind of clocking circuitry within it. The MBC's clock is pretty seriously overbuilt, so I was very curious to hear how that was going to affect the D2A in the Apollos, as well as the A to D in the Apollos. So what we're going to do is take a listen to two Apollo bouncers first. The first Apollo bounce is no MBC clocking from external, and the second one is clocking from the MBC. The next thing I'm going to do is the same test, but with the MBC. One with a clock from the Apollos, and then one with a clock by the MBC powering all of the D to A and the A to D. So the last thing we're going to do is use the MBC as the final stage of mastering before coming into the box. This will allow us to add a bit of level, push the device, push the transformer slightly, and just hear how it sounds when it's working a little bit harder. There's a heart over here from a love that is real at the time. I'm not sure that I'm whole, but I'm trying. Got a feeling. I'm knowing. So who is the MBC for? If you're somebody who mixes in the box, then I don't necessarily think this is the right purchase for you because of course that's one extra set of D to A and one extra set of A to D that you need to purchase only for a little bit of color and for a little bit of limiting. However, if you're somebody who works in a very hybrid workflow where you have certain pieces of outboard or have a summing mixer or in my case a console, this device really can elevate not only your capture of the A to D, but open up the D to A of your devices as well. And the way that I found it really effective is to use it as the master clock on my Apollos. The Apollos don't sound bad by any stretch of the imagination. The way the audience is set up over here, by pressing the mix button, I'm able to hear just the master bus. And then when I flick into the DAW mode, I'm then hearing what is coming back from the converters. And the difference in those two tones has always been quite frustrating to me because the stereo image kind of closes down, the bottom octave of a mix doesn't feel as solid, and things are kind of just lost ever so slightly. I'm not talking huge amounts here, it's the final 5%, which is always the hardest and most expensive little bit to kind of eke out of your system. By implementing the MBC into the system here, not only was it great to hear how well it captured the mix coming off of the desk, and I didn't feel that difference as much at all. The biggest difference was when I put in the clocking and ran the Apollos off of the MBC as the master clock. That provided some of that solidity in the bottom end, and specifically on the D2A, 
it just felt like everything was slightly more holographic and a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. The reason why I would want to keep this device is because it not only levels up my capture from the console or my golden channels like vocals, kick, snare, or any two channels that I'm recording at one time, but the biggest thing is that I'm able to step up my current conversion to a way better clock, which makes them sing in a totally different way. The song that you heard earlier was recorded completely with the MBC. The latency figures are pop up over here, and because I work at 96K, my round trip latency is pretty low as it is. So what could be improved on this device? Well, of course, the first thing is you're using it in a mastering or a mixing setup, which means that you're gonna have to deal with recalls. I'd love to see a version of this box in the future that has just a blank face plate in the front with the screen where you can use a plugin to be able to deal with all of your recalls. So anytime you open up a session, it will automatically recall your clock. It'll automatically recall the settings that you have. Overall, it's really well built. Unsurprisingly, sounds ridiculously good. The build quality, kind of like the Shelford, is just ridiculously good. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you have subscribed to the channel in the past, thank you so very much for doing so. If you would like to subscribe, then please consider doing so. It'll really help the channel growth and uh, kind of want to make this my full-time job. Most importantly, I hope that you're all looking after yourselves and you're being kind. I'll see you in the next one.